Hey guys, Jesse Laval, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the new firmware version 1.3 that I installed into the Canon EOS R6 here and all of the stuff that it brought with it. The first thing that I want to talk about is the light 4K compression. That's the biggest part of the update for me personally is the fact that now I don't have to use proxies when I edit in Premiere Pro. That's a huge, huge thing for me. It took up so much time to make proxies and so much space and I hated it and I'm so glad that I don't have to use it anymore. That being said, we have to make sure that we don't lose too much quality, otherwise we're not going to use the lighter compression rate, right? So what we're going to do is check out these videos here. I took one shot at ISO 100. Again, I shot at this at 4K, 60 frames per second. I pushed the grade really hard to see if it would fall apart. And I shot one at normal compression and one at light compression. Now, that being said, I don't really see any quality loss at ISO 100, but usually things fall apart worse when we go into higher ISO. So let's go inside and let's shoot Baby Sushi Cat at ISO 12,800. Again, pushed the grade really hard, did all the same stuff that I did to the first clips. We're shooting at ISO 12,800, 4K 60, and I'm not seeing any image quality loss at all. My eyes don't see it. Do yours? Let me know in the comments if you do. I'm not seeing really any quality loss in the lighter compression, which is like what I was really hoping for because like I said, I'm able to use my computer without proxies and I just couldn't be any happier about that fact because that was the super big bummer to me about using this R6 was the fact that I had to use proxies all of a sudden, so I had to wait like an hour to get those proxy files generated, and it took up more hard drive space. And that's another thing that's great about these lighter compression is that you are using way less memory when you're recording your videos now, and you're actually getting more time that you're able to record it. Now, I don't know if the camera's gonna overheat slower, I haven't done that yet. The 25 minute timer is still there, just like it was with the other compression. So I don't know if you're actually gonna get more time. I know that you can actually record more time onto your card because you're not using as much memory. Whether it overheats the camera as fast, that still remains to be seen. We're definitely gonna have to test that out. Another thing that they fixed is a bug that they had. Apparently you were running into problems sometimes when shooting in continuous plus mode. Now, I did actually experience a glitch and I thought it might have been because of my Tamron lens. Now I'm starting to think that it might have been this bug that they're mentioning because what would happen was when I would shoot a burst in high-speed continuous mode once in a while it only happened twice actually it happened to me twice and I wasn't able to recreate it after that every time I would shoot a burst there would be a glitch in the stabilization and that stabilization would kind of tweak itself out to the right and what that would do would make the first shot of the burst be completely blurry to the point that you would even see some of the rolling shutter issues that the sensor presents when you pan really quickly right but then after that, all of the other shots in the burst would be totally clear, totally perfectly sharp. And again, I wasn't able to recreate it except for twice. I got it to happen twice, and then I wasn't able to make it happen again, so I never really like made a video about it. They fixed a bug that fixes a phenomenon where the image sent to the viewfinder can become corrupted. So apparently that's what was happening. The image going to the viewfinder was corrupting once in a while. Again, it was a rare glitch, but I had it happen a handful of times, so good to see that they fixed that. You're also going to have the ability to shut off the LCD monitor when you're recording, which is nice if you want to save battery. They're also quashing a bug where apparently the camera could become suspended when using a USB power source, like running your camera off a power brick. I never did that, so I never experienced the bug, but good again to see that they're quashing out those bugs for us. All in all, I think this update was really welcomed. I really wish that we would have got C-Log 3 because that would have just been so awesome, but hopefully we'll receive it on the next update. Again, guys, if you think this video helped you in any way, please think about going below, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on my next video.